somebody appreciate the Lord of Harmony. That door, my name is Henry, the man I'm born again. I love Christ. And uh, this time, uh, uh, going straight on to the point about exposing the Bible. Thank you for studying, necessarily, and the leadership for seeing it work for me to do this segment today. And I honor the Lord. Glory be to God. I want us to stand somewhere. Acts chapter 19. I want you to ask your friend this question because this is where we are basing our faith from. Acts chapter 19. And it happened from verse 1. Acts chapter 19. At 10 and 2. And it happened when Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, and this is the question now, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? Ask your neighbor. Did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? Let them answer you. Amen. This is a Bible study. This is a long preaching. This is a Bible study. So you can ask a question if you have a question. Amen. Did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? Let us look at the answer of these disciples. In fact, they were disciples. Note carefully, they were disciples. So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Ghost. How many have not heard about the Holy Ghost? All of us, we have heard about the Holy Ghost. Oh. These disciples did not know. He said unto them, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that he should believe on him who was to come after him, that is Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, verse 6. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spoke with tongues, they prophesied. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, have you spoken in tongues? Let them answer you. Amen. Okay, ask them, have you ever prophesied? Have you ever prophesied? Amen. When Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came upon them. They spoke in tongues and they prophesied. Amen. Those are the questions I want us to base our argument with. Because every believer every believer there are signs that should show that you are a believer so today I want you to to get yourself whether you are a believer or not now let us to go to the book of Mark chapter number 16 verse 17 look at what the Bible is saying Mark chapter number 16 verse 17 wow these signs will follow those who believe. What do we call those who believe? They are believers. Amen. Amen. Number one, in my name, they will cast out demons. Who is the name of the dog? Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody who believes in my name, they will drive out the demons. So if you are not in this category, we are not whether you are a believer. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, they will speak with the new tongues. Not Kimeru. 
This is this is not Hikui, not Kappa. Those speak with the new tongues. Everybody who does what? Believes. Amen. Amen. We are talking about the Holy Spirit. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will not by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So I want you to, to count how many signs you have if you are a believer. Check your neighbor whether they are counting. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to learn the importance of having the Holy Spirit in our lives. And uh, because uh, I have 25 minutes, let me teach. Having this, my argument from that, uh, from that scripture, let me start with Ezekiel, chapter number 36. So that I can show you where the Holy Spirit has been promised and why we should receive the promise of God, every one of us. Ezekiel chapter 36, from verse 25, the Bible says, Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all the filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone off your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, my statutes and you will be and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I give, I give to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all uncleanliness, and I will, I will call the grain and multiply and bring famine, and no famine upon you. Praise the Lord. I want to start with showing you that the Holy Spirit is a promise already. And it's a promise to all of us who believe. And when Jesus is ascending to heaven, he's telling his disciples, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will give you a helper, and he will teach you all things, and he shall remind you what I have been telling you. Praise the Lord. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is a promise and he is, a, he is God, equal in nature, equal in character, equal in attribute. He is, he is God. So we, we cannot say that uh, he is less of any Godhead. We say he is among the Trinity. So that means himself is God. Whatever God the Father and God the Son is, the Holy Spirit is also. Hallelujah. So, now, Ezekiel here is telling them one thing. For me now, to make you come close to God, for me now to make sure that I have uh, made you like I want you to be, there's one thing I will do. I will clean you. Amen. That is verse 26. At 25, I will sprinkle clean water on you. And therefore, as we begin, there's one thing that is so clear when we are learning about the Holy Spirit. That everybody without the Holy Spirit, they are not clean. And therefore, that's why we have to preach to people so that they can be sprinkled with this water so that they can become clean. Hallelujah. Amen. And let me remind you one thing because of uh, maybe our, our, our background, where we come from. When you receive Jesus, Jesus comes to your heart in the form of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So everybody who is born again, it is the Holy Spirit who lives in them. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says Jesus ascended and went to heaven. So whoever is now in this current era and dispensation is the Holy Spirit of God. Therefore, when you say I'm born again, you are saying, I have received the gift of the Holy Spirit 
who dwells in me and who helps me live the life of salvation in holiness and in righteousness. Amen. Amen. Number two now, because Jesus told me for them us that how will you become born again? You must be born of the water and of the spirit. That is why there had to be a spirit coming inside of us. Because we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in this body. So the Holy Spirit comes and lives in our spirit. Amen. That is when we get born again. Therefore, when you're talking about the Holy Spirit, I, I, I want to, to show you the importance of you not living any minute without Him. Amen. So, we, we don't doubt that if you have become born again, you have the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. But again, now, today I want us to go to another now promise, the one that is promised in Joel chapter chapter 2, and the same is repeated in Acts chapter 2, that uh, I will pour down my spirit upon all flesh. What will happen? Young men, they will see what? And then old men will dream what? Dreams. So I, I want to take you now there, because if you have become born again, we, we don't doubt that you have the Holy Spirit living in you. But now there is an outpouring. So this is what Jesus is saying to the disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. That when the Holy Ghost will come now upon you, there is, there is now a, a, a dispensation where He is not only now inside of you, but He comes over you, upon you. And that is when you receive power. Amen. Ask your neighbor, have you received this power? Are we together? So, what is what is needed for us now to receive this Holy Spirit that we are talking about? What 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 what, what is it that we need to 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 do? What are the are there conditions? Is there a formula? Is there anything we can do so that we can receive the Holy Spirit? Amen. I, I think we shall come to 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 a person called uh, Simon in the book of Acts. I think it's uh, chapter 8, where he saw uh, the apostles lay hands on the people and then they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he is telling, he is telling them, let me give you some money. You, you give me that trick. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor the things of the Spirit. It's not a trick. It is real. Hallelujah. So we cannot buy the Holy Spirit. There is no, there is no money, no amount of money we can use to, to purchase this gift. Therefore, that's why we have to learn, that's why we have to teach people whatever the Bible says concerning the Holy Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. So I want us to start, to start somewhere now uh, from the book of, uh, let me see, let's start with the book of Acts. But before that, Go, go back to, to, to Ezekiel. I want to show you something here. Ezekiel 36, where we are. Before even we, we go to the Acts, because I want us to read Acts 2, verse 37, Ezekiel is saying, for me to give you what I'm, I'm about to tell you, I must curse you. Go to the other verse, verse 26. Then I will give you a heart and a new spirit within you. You know what, what this means is we are lost in sin. People are rebellious to God. When you are not born again, when a person is not born again, they are rebellious to God. Therefore, what does God do? He is saying, because you cannot save yourself, because there is no amount of money you can give, because there is no amount of sacrifice you can do, I, I will offer a sacrifice. So, what is that sacrifice? It is Jesus Christ and through His blood that we are sprinkled and we are made whole. We are made clean. Amen. Amen. After being clean, now, no, verse, verse, verse 26. After being made clean, we are...